The enlightenment for which Zen aims, for which Zen exists, comes of itself. As consciousness, one moment it does not exist, the next it does. But physical man walks in the element of time even as he walks in mud, dragging his feet in his true nature. So even Zen must compromise and recognize progressive steps of awareness leading closer to the ever instant of enlightenment. That is what this next section is about. In the twelfth century, the Chinese master Kakuan drew pictures of ten bulls, basing them on earlier Taoist bulls, and wrote the comments in prose and verse. His version was pure Zen, going deeper than earlier versions, which had ended with the nothingness of the eighth picture. It has been a constant source of inspiration to students ever since, and many illustrations of Kakuan's bulls have been made through the centuries. The bull is the eternal principle of life, truth in action. The ten bulls represent sequent steps in the realization of one's true nature. This sequence is as potent today as it was when Kakuan developed it from earlier works and made his paintings of the bull. An understanding of the creative principle transcends any time or place. The Ten Bulls is more than poetry, more than pictures. It is a revelation of spiritual unfoldment paralleled in every Bible of human experience. May the reader, like the Chinese patriarch, discover the footprints of his potential self and carrying the staff of his purpose and the wine jug of his true desire, frequent the marketplace and there enlighten others. The Search for the Bull In the pasture of this world I endlessly push aside the tall grasses in search of the bull. Following unnamed rivers, lost upon the interpenetrating paths of distant mountains, my strength failing and my vitality exhausted, I cannot find the bull. I only hear the locusts churring through the forest at night. Comment the bull never has been lost. What need is there to search? Only because of separation from my true nature I fail to find him. In the confusion of the senses I lose even his tracks. Far from home I see many crossroads, but which way is the right one I know not. Greed and fear, good and bad, entangle me. Discovering the Footprints Along the river bank under the trees, I discover footprints. Even under the fragrant grass, I see his prints. Deep in remote mountains they are found. These traces no more can be hidden than one's nose looking heavenward. Comment Understanding the teaching, I see the footprints of the bull. Then I learn that just as many utensils are made from one metal, so too are myriad entities made of the fabric of self. Unless I discriminate, how will I perceive the true from the untrue? Not yet having entered the gate, nevertheless, I have discerned the path. Perceiving the Bull I hear the song of the nightingale. The sun is warm, the wind is mild. Willows are green along the shore. Here... No bull can hide. What artist can draw that massive head, those majestic horns? Comment. When one hears the voice, one can sense its source. As soon as the six senses merge, the gate is entered. Wherever one enters, one sees the head of the bull. This unity is like salt in water, like color in dye stuff. The slightest thing is not apart from self. Catching the Bull I seize him with a terrific struggle. His great will and power are inexhaustible. He charges to the high plateau far above the cloud mists, or in an impenetrable ravine he stands. Comment He dwelt in the forest a long time, but I caught him today.
Infatuation for scenery interferes with his direction. Longing for sweeter grass, he wanders away. His mind still is stubborn and unbridled. If I wish him to submit, I must raise my whip. Taming the Bull The whip and rope are necessary, else he might stray off down some dusty road. Being well trained, he becomes naturally gentle. Then, unfettered, he obeys his master. Comment When one thought arises, another thought follows. When the first thought springs from enlightenment, all subsequent thoughts are true. Through delusion, one makes everything untrue. Delusion is not caused by objectivity. It is the result of subjectivity. Hold the nose ring tight and do not allow even a doubt. Riding the Bull Home Mounting the bull, slowly I return homeward. The voice of my flute intones through the evening. Measuring with hand beats the pulsating harmony, I direct the endless rhythm. Whoever hears this melody will join me. Comment. This struggle is over. Gain and loss are assimilated. I sing the song of the village woodsman and play the tunes of the children. Astride the bull, I observe the clouds above. Onward I go, no matter who may wish to call me back. The Bull Transcended Astride the bull, I reach home. I am serene. The bull, too, can rest. The dawn has come. In blissful repose, within my thatched dwelling, I have abandoned the whip and rope comment. All is one law, not two. We only make the bull a temporary subject. It is as the relation of rabbit and trap, of fish and net. It is as gold and dross, or the moon emerging from a cloud. One path of clear light travels on throughout endless time. Both bull and self transcended. Whip, rope, person, and bull all merge in no thing. This heaven is so vast, no message can stain it. How may a snowflake exist in a raging fire? Here are the footprints of the patriarchs. Comment. Mediocrity is gone. Mind is clear of limitation. I seek no state of enlightenment. Neither do I remain where no enlightenment exists. Since I linger in neither condition, eyes cannot see me. If hundreds of birds strew my path with flowers, such praise would be meaningless. What is Zen? Try if you wish, but Zen comes of itself. True Zen shows in everyday living, consciousness in action. More than any limited awareness, it opens every inner door to our infinite nature. Instantly, mind frees. How it frees. False Zen racks brains as a fiction concocted by priests and salesmen to peddle their own wares. Look at it this way, inside out and outside in. Consciousness everywhere, inclusive, through you. Then you can't help living humbly, in wonder. What is Zen? One answer. Inayat Khan tells a Hindu story of a fish who went to a queen fish and asked, I have always heard about the sea, but what is this sea? Where is it? The queen fish explained, You live, move, and have your being in the sea. The sea is within you and without you, and you are made of sea, and you will end in sea. The sea surrounds you as your own being. 
another answer.